Meeting on Tuesday, May 17th, will come to order. Is everything on the agenda we're going to hear, or is anything uh, going to be postponed? Okay. So the first item uh, will be the continued public hearings, and then we'll go into the discussions. So, so Rebecca, where do we stand on the Verizon project? Okay. So as stated previously, the Verizon, um, Verizon is seeking a wireless facility special permit in order to install cloud radio access network CRAN technology on 24 utility poles owned by National Grid in various locations in the town. Uh, at the last public hearing, the board requested a direct response to the issues raised uh, by the review consultant and also asked for a list of the poles that had existing guide, uh, guide wires, and the consultant had pro um, has uh, provided both of those uh, that were included in the packet, and I can display them on the screen. Okay. Additionally, the board had requested uh, a, dis a determination by the building commissioner on zoning, and the building commissioner referred to a letter he wrote in 2008 stating that the antenna was so placed on an existing structure and that the existing structure was a non-conforming structure, and therefore, in this case, the utility pole is the existing non-conforming structure, and zoning will not apply. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else? Do we have information we need to get from the applicant at this point? He's provided everything that we've asked for so far. Okay. So, why don't we turn it over to the applicant? Maybe you can just tell us how you responded to those questions and any sure. additional information. As you know, my name is Chris Swinierski. I'm an attorney from McLean Middleton representing Verizon Wireless. Um, as Rebecca said, from our last meeting on May 3rd, um, there were a few items that the board had requested. Um, mainly, the, the only issue raised in the Isotrope Wireless Review Report was the possibility that we could provide a um, radiation safety report for all of the antennae that were located lower than 10 meters on the poles. Um, we did provide you that. Um, I had it tabbed as uh, number 19 in the materials that I sent, um, which concludes um, with certainty that we're right around 1% of the allowable emissions under the FCC regulations, which was the number that I stated also at our last meeting. Um, other than that, uh, the board had requested a list of the poles that we were proposing to use that have existing guy wires. Um, I went through and looked at the plans and made that list. Um, so you have those before you. How many were there? Um, on the screen. No, I didn't count. 16, yeah. Now, you know, as I mentioned before, with respect to guy wires, I have absolutely no control over those. Those are existing and those are there under existing protocols and best engineering practices for the utility company, essentially to make sure the utility poles don't fall down. Um, the equipment I'm putting on there weighs very little, um, as I showed you all with that antenna that was here before. It's approximately 22 pounds. The guy wires aren't there for our equipment. They're already there. Um, I have no say, absolutely nothing I can do to compel the utility company to take them down, nor does the agreement that we have with the utility company ever prevent them from taking it down. Um, we're really nothing to them. You know, they're required to give us space under federal and state law. We pay them very, very little money, again, under federal and state law. Like, we're talking, like, between $1 and $2 a month. Um, we're not going to stop them taking those down. If they ever plan to move those poles, replace those poles with non-guide poles, we're not going to be in the way. And we're happy to agree to that, too. I mean, we can certainly agree to relocate because that's what's going to happen in reality anyway. Do they make you get any structural engineering reports on these poles to make sure the poles, existing poles, even though it's their responsibility to maintain them, that they're in good shape? Because some poles I've noticed already have a significant lean. Yep, they do an in-house structural assessment. Um, again, that's part of their protocol. So when we fill out an application to go on a particular poll, they will evaluate that. And there's a whole 
set of standards and guidelines that they use. Um, I'm not that familiar with it, but it's a clearance that we do have to go through. So they have, have they done it on these polls already, or they yeah. do it after you get to the? Okay. No, they've done it already. Um, before we come to any town, we make sure that these are the locations that have been approved by the utility because you know, we don't want to do this twice, obviously. Um, so we go in, we, we get our agreement with the utility company first, and then we come to the town. So that has all been completed on all of these polls. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Uh -huh. And the minutes said that you agreed to notify the homeowners, assuming that this is in front of a house. How, how are you going to do that? How are you going to notify them? We can send a letter. That's, I mean, if the board has a different way, that would be the, the common sense way to me, but I'm happy to do whatever you like. No, I just wanted that, yep. that on record. Just yep. you would do. Oh, we can certainly do that. Um, in fact, I, I think I've probably forgotten about that, so if we want to make that condition, that's certainly fine. It's no problem. I don't know if it has to be a condition. You said that, that, would, that you would do that, so... Okay. Well, I will do it anyway. Yes, I'll agree to do it. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, if anybody in public would like to ask a question or have a comment, your chance to do that. Okay. Um, hearing none, um, we or we'll vote this the next time. Is that? Um, so it, this is not conditioned on this particular permit, but moving forward, there does need to be a discussion on how we would like to proceed with these um, permitting these types of technologies. As Chris had previously mentioned at the last public hearing, this will not just be the 24 locations. This will continue to be more locations throughout, and whether or not we want to address that like other communities have in terms of discussing more about maybe changing the bylaw, maybe um, permitting it. Um, or making it a buy right or doing something that would help move the process forward instead of having to waive all these conditions but that's a con that's a discussion for that's a discussion for a different exactly. time I just uh, I guess I just want to see what we do next is we we vote on this but we obviously don't have a decision here so we'll we'll vote on this we'll keep it open we'll vote on this the next meeting okay. we'll so. draft a decision Maybe for next time forward, it would be helpful to see what happens with these 20 whatever that we're going to see. Yeah. Right. So it's our first experience with it. So yeah. yeah you and we know yeah. what to do going forward until Correct. we see how it works out. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, I think it's good to do 20 is a relatively small number. We'll see if it works and yeah. we'll go from there. So, fair enough. Should okay. I give you a proposed decision? Because I, I thought I was getting a vote tonight. Um, <laughs> we're going on. No, we, we do not let applicants write our decisions. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Is there anything I can do to yeah. help get a decision next time? Uh, you can to talk to the planner. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a pretty good process for our decision. So we'll uh, we'll get it in advance. We'll talk about the meeting. We'll vote at the meeting, and we'll be done. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when's the next meeting? June 7th. June 7th. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Roberta, you might want to then, since we have time before we have uh, the decision, to add the notification to the homeowners. Right. I made that note that we wanted the condition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, next item, uh, we have three discussion items on the agenda, and the first one is 1636 Osgood Street, Rough and Tumble Play Care, and we talked about this the last time, is my recollection. Um, what did we have? I, I think we sort of did it as a mini site plan, but were there, uh, what were we looking for that we didn't have? What was the follow-up? Uh, the only additional information that was requested at the last meeting was for um, some photos of the uh, site on ground instead of aerial views. So we went out and we took some photos of the building. I'll display them on the screen right now. So this is the front of the building, so building 48. And then we had a little paint would work. <laughs> <laughs> Wonders. <laughs> this is the view of um, from one of the corners, the field, uh, the triangle. I can pull up the locus to where you saw where the outside of the dog park would be, where they would have those um, individual sections for dog size and maturity. 
then we had discussed some of the lighting and fencing issues. Sorry, I couldn't turn the photo this way, but you can kind of see that the lighting needs a little work, and the fence is is actually, uh, as we discussed, the barbed wire is coming down and needs some uh, attention. And then. This would be the entryway down from uh, building 48 past building 49, the stairway down to get to the park on the outside, the outside area. And then the last one is the side entrance where we had discussed where that's where the, the handicapped entrance would be on the side of the building. And then the only other thing that had come up with this particular project is that um, there is a project proposed for this site that is going to encroach upon the uh, the existing parking plan that they had put together. Um, so they're still going to keep with the same uh, number of spaces. However, the layout has changed. And this is the attached layout. So they're still going to have the same amount of spaces with the handicap, handicap parking in the front, right where that entry doorway that we just looked at. But the parking spaces are going to be moved up, and then the other uh, are going to be over towards the side. Okay. The one comment I have on that is we're putting a handicapped parking space, which appears to probably be the fire lane. Is we, can we get the fire department to review this just to make sure? And there's also a fire hydrant there. If they're fencing things off in the fire hydrant, I don't know where the fire <coughs> fencing versus the fire hydrant is going to be, just to make sure the fire department can review this and make sure that doesn't interfere with trucks. We can get their input. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to make that turn with those yellow ones, the five spaces out that may make a turn now down there. Okay, any uh, other comments or questions from the board? Any uh, comments or questions from the public? Uh, hearing none, I think on this, the level of detail that we need in our so-called decision is less than a normal uh, site plan, but it still should be rigorous. So we either have two options of holding this off to the next time or making the determination tonight that we waive site plan review and instruct uh, the planner to, to write up the decision. It's we have drafted a decision in your packets for oh, review yeah. if you'd like to look at oh, that. Okay. We had uh, discussed doing some more conditions as we had discussed at the last public um, okay. meeting Which in terms one? of lighting, okay. etc. So given the circumstances, we did, yeah. we did include the conditions yeah. even though it's a Oh, okay. okay. So uh, we don't have a decision to close, so let's look at this mm -hmm. and um, you know, because I presume everybody's okay with waiving site plan review. Yeah, yeah, but I have a question. So, where they're going to drive down? Yes. There's a little person standing there, I guess. I don't know what that is. That, that figure at the end? The figure I don't think end. there's a. I don't what think there are any people in that. That's yeah, when you do a map. Where, where is that? On the very so, far right? Is that where they're going to be driving in? No, no, that's that, that, a yes, that's a roadway. Okay, yeah. so those patches, is that grass? Where are you? See, when you're coming down, what it's all pavement, Laura. Right here. No, Those to are the, grass, to the, the left roadway. is the road. Right. Yeah. Oh, to I the see. left I'm of that. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, they'll, the, they'll where, take a right. Where it's white and gray, that's okay. all blacktop. I'm sorry. Just, I was like mm -hmm. focusing on the, the person there. Okay. And that handicapped spot little, is in line with that <laughs> ramp and there. The, <laughs> so it's oh, where there. Right. Where that used to be a, actually a through road, roadway, the the uh, solar project will effectively make that a dead end. Uh, so the parking, the, the circulation will still remain yeah. the same. So the same. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Still a total of 11 spaces with these changes. Yep. 
and required is six. Is it three. three. Three is required. It's, it's well above what's required. One thing that we should uh, put in here, I think it's similar to what we have on the site plan review, <coughs> is when we do sort of the findings of fact, we have to explain why we're waiving. And there's conditions, but I think what we need to say is a couple comments that we're waiving this because it, you know, it's sort of an existing large parcel, you know, it's got a de minimis impact, they've showed us enough information. I mean, just sort of explain why we're, we're waiving it. Ready to discuss? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The, um, Conditions. The first one, adequate lighting during the evening hours. Uh, only saying the evening hours, or is it night too? Or? Is it a night to be evening? But yeah. We can strengthen it any way you want. And what is adequate? Is this exterior, interior? Um, We're talking exterior. I mean, Okay, and is somebody going to make the evaluation as to what's adequate? Because I sure couldn't. Right. Well, remember, we're waiving site plan reviews. Right. So, I mean, so we didn't get a vote. Yeah, we did not get a vote. Nobody's actually plan. ever. It, uh, this is one case where I think kind of a reasonable person's mm -hmm. standard is okay, because it's not like it's going to be visible by a lot of people off the street. I mean, you could say uh, she'll be provided and approved by the planner. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's fine. And we're going to add the one that I think Lynn brought up about the uh, fire department review. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so we'll plan to get that review prior yeah, and include it in the finding of fact yeah. Yeah. Sure. before yeah. we sign this. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be a finding of fact, yeah. assuming so, they uh, approve that location. Yeah. And if not, we'll look to relocate that as one of the seven across yeah. the ways yeah. and, and remove it. So. so would somebody like to make a motion in this case to for the rough and tumble play care to waive site plan review uh, based on the uh, uh, findings of fact and uh, conditions attached? So moved. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded, and that's as amended, right? That's as as discussed. Okay. Yep. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I just want to go back to the beginning comment about everything being heard. There's one item, the executive session. It will be for the executive session approval of meeting minutes only, and it will not be will not include any type of litigation discussion. Okay. 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 And then we'll well we'll close the open meeting before we do that yeah. anyway. And so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we can okay. Uh, we can the next about. item is <laughs> seems to be Osgood Street night, isn't yes. it? <laughs> 1755 Osgood Street Kettle Pizza request for waiver of site plan review. So this is new. We haven't seen this yet. Well, we actually yeah. have. Oh, um, we have. We have. Yes. Um, the applicant um, came before the board in April and they're proposing to reconnect the access from 125 and widen the access from Bradford Street, improving the loading dock area and removing some paving and curbing near the loading dock. Um, at the last meeting, so there was... Is, oh, oh, sorry. Kettle Pizza, so that's yes. right there where I was, I was thinking of the... Uh, so it's the, the very last pizza. parcel nice. of yeah, land okay. right. yeah. on the Haverhill yeah. line. Okay. I'll pull up the locus right now. Yeah. So at the last meeting, we asked for some additional departmental review as well as some additional supplemental information. And we do have all that to discuss tonight. Okay, so can you summarize one of the open items, Rebecca? Um, so at the last public meeting, we asked for police department, fire department, and DPW review. Uh, review. Uh, police stated that any construction that would have an impact on the public way would need to have a police detail, but otherwise they're all set with the proposal. Fire did not have any issues with the proposal, and DPW stated that they were okay with the proposal. We also notified the um, abutters in both North Andover and Haverhill at the request of the board as a courtesy. Additionally, um, the, at the last public meeting, the board had suggested that in order to cut down on the width of the entrance from the proposed 92 
feet that they had originally proposed to cut that down and by being creative with moving some parking spaces and then moving the entrance way a little further down and the applicant has provided a new proposal that eliminates two parking spaces moves the entrance way 21 feet and eliminates 15 feet of the existing driveway so they're really only increasing the width of the driveway now by six feet as opposed to the original 32 feet Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might want to, given that I think most of the people here are for this discussion, um, I'd ask when we get this up for the applicant to maybe go back and do a, you know, sort of a restart about just exactly what you're planning on doing and answer, you know, the changes you've made. And then that way, anybody that is, was not here the last time at least has the same baseline as we do. So, okay. <coughs> Uh, good evening. I'm Philip Christensen, engineer for the applicant, uh, which is Kettle Pizza. George Peters is here with me. Uh, he's one of the founders of the company. He brought a sample of, of, of what they do there. So, uh, so I have to tell you, when uh, years ago when we did Sal's project, he actually brought a pizza one time. <laughs> 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 so, Nothing like visuals. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> instead of the details on this, the first thing I want to cover is we did talk to Jerry Brown about uh, the use of this. One of your questions last time was, uh, does it fall under the proper use? And as you know, <clears throat> the town meeting just voted to change the zoning so light industrials back in this district. But also, did Jerry get to you guys this afternoon? He did walk with yes. us and communicated that he felt the use was allowed by right. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. So what it is here is that uh, there are occasionally deliveries and uh, shipments where you need tr tractor trailers to come into the property. And originally uh, when LCOM was here, there had been an access from 125 and at one point they decided to eliminate Sorry. that access. They didn't do the paperwork with the state to eliminate it, they just cut the access off so trucks couldn't come in there. <clears throat> so there is on record with District 4 access allowed to this property. <clears throat> One of the questions uh, that we received from DPW and, and, and others looking at this was, well, shouldn't you get approval from the state on 125 before you come to us for anything? And the answer to that is the state refuses to give any approvals until the towns approve projects first. Uh, I've run into it in other towns. I do all the review and new report for their planning board. We have a project before if it's a 60 unit project, and they're proposing access to Route 1, but D, uh, DOT will not review that project. And so the applicant has to spend all the money to get through the planning board, and the planning board could approve it. And, DOT could still turn them down, so yeah. it's, it's a bad situation, but that's the way that the state works. <clears throat> so we will, if this moves ahead, then meet with uh, District 4 to get that access opened again. Um, and we'll, so that's one of three things we're going to do on site is open that access. We also have to uh, create a more level area by the loading box, and that's shown on the plan. Uh, and that's just with these tractor trailers, we just need a, a more of a level area where they can set. If you see there's a shaded area right by the loading dock there <clears throat> that we're going to repave. Right now it's a little out of level, so that has to be fixed. That's the piece in the upper left. Yeah, you see the entry door no, it was label? Right in the middle, right where the cursor is now? Right there, yeah. Oh, okay. That, that, that whole area has to be regraded. And in doing that, we're changing somewhat. There, there's if you go to the existing conditions plan, you'll see that there's a, yeah, the island, see that little grass island there is different on that uh, to the left of the entry door. If you see that, we're moving that, we're eliminating some of that to give a little bit more room for the trucks to swing. So if you go back to the proposed plan, <clears throat> you can compare that area. We changed that little area where we removed the pavement. Right? And then finally, what we want to do is increase the radius for trucks turning, leaving the property and turning down Bradford Street back to 125. Uh, and one of the reasons is with the tractor trailers, uh, because they're big and they have a large turning radius, 
it's difficult for them to leave without without causing problems to people across the street on the Haverhill side of the road. So by increasing that radius and making the, making the driveway wider here, we give them more opportunity to straighten the trucks out before they go out to Bradford Street. So that's the main thing under consideration here is that, as you know, you have a regulation with regard to uh, driveway width at the property line and uh, it's part of the zoning regulations and we're increasing this to wider than what's in the zoning regulations. So the proposal, if you don't see it, in the white area at the entrance would, would actually close that area up more in order to, with a really dark shade over there, the 21 feet would be opening up that end of it. Yeah, you see there's a removed pavement and there's an arrow and there's, a, I think, 16 feet. Is that what that reads under that? What are you going to do with that 16 feet? Just be grass. Okay. Pavement comes out. So then that, because we're increasing by 21 feet at the property line, we're decreasing by 16. So, or 15, I'm not sure. I think it's 15? I think it's 16. 16, okay. 15. So there's a difference of five feet in added width. Is there a space once the truck starts to come out where it could complete going all the way onto Bradford Street? Or would it, if it gets held up by traffic on 125, would Oh, it is there enough queuing on? room? Yeah. Yes, yes, there is. It's back far enough. I think, um, do you have that, that over? Yep, we're bringing that up right now. Okay. Or maybe just the other end of this drawing. Let's see it. So that one. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah and it, it, if you pan that down a little bit more, if you could. Um, or up. I think you can slip this just, yeah. So you, yeah, can, and you see can see 125 more? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good. So when the trucks entered, they'd go up, they'd have a little bit more room to maneuver so they could back in. And then when they leave, they'd follow approximately that path. And you said uh, two trucks a week, maybe more? Depending on the season, we don't see some trucks for a few weeks, depending on the season. Well, what's, what's your max? Um, on a okay. peak season, we pro probably a couple a day. You know? it, does, it really depends. Uh, Hours of delivery? No. Uh, never after or pickup. Uh, never after 4:30. That's our, you know, we close at 4:30. So the pickup window and delivery window is, you know, eight to five. But usually everything comes after noon time and before 4:30. They're usually in and out. Monday through Friday. Questions from Clerk Pete. Laura? Is there a reason why you can't just use um, Osgood Street for both entrance and exiting? Yes. Okay, what is it? You can't, once you're back into that dock, you wouldn't be able to turn back into the parking lot within the length of the track to trail okay. right back home. No. So now I, I know you've patiently waited, so if you do have questions, if you could come up, if you could give them, yeah, your spot filled, uh, that'd be great. Thank you. And come up if you could just identify who you are, and uh, we'll see if we can get an answer to your question. Well, I'm, okay. My name is Susan <laughs> Carpenito, um, and we obviously were all residents of Bradford Street. Um, not that I have questions, it's more of comments. Um, we currently, I don't know if you're aware or you probably are aware of the traffic issues currently on that street. We have um, trailers, tractor trailers that are come up and down 125 that are not supposed to be using 125. They're supposed to be going 133. Um, are these to the waste treatment plant? Is, no. Or is it no, just... Right, like the Brook School, like food service trucks would go up and down the street. Yep. Okay, yeah, if you could just put person. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, and like I said, we, we have young children on the street. You talk about like the delivery of, you know, one or two trucks a week. Um, I, I don't believe that. Um, tractor trailer trucks. These are large. What are the size of the trucks you're talking about? 
Okay, yeah, if you could, I, yeah, have all the discussion come through us, it's just a little easier that way. Yeah. So. The size of the trucks, what are the size of the trucks? Probably the same size trucks that the New England Track the Trail School uses across the street. And those are huge trucks, huge. Um, the other comment I have, you mentioned something about the police department, said that this was acceptable. I myself have been in touch with the police department about many issues on the street. I can't imagine that. But we're, the, what we're only dealing with here is the, this specific property and impact on this specific property, okay. not yeah. the overall issues. I, I mean, a lot of people have, I grant you, there's traffic issues on Bradford Street, there's traffic issues on Johnson Street, there's traffic issues on a lot of streets. There's not an easy solution to them. If somebody is doing something that's not legal, we, we have some flexibility. If somebody's moving too fast, we have flexibility. There's other maybe road common things we can do, but it's, it's really more of a general town thing. We, what we're trying to do is to focus on the impact of this specific and the impact would be huge on our neighborhood. Yeah. Huge. So right now, I walk street this street. I what are we like? Uh, well, sixty-eight, so six houses up. Okay. I walk this street every day and practically get hit by cars every day. So, again, I know I'm focusing on something else, but the impact of having tractor trailer trucks come in and out of that entrance is is huge these two girls here you want to step up they actually live right across the street yes. from yeah if you could if somebody else wants to so did elcom not utilize any tractor trailers no no, no. no. Um, i just have a couple of questions i think that she has talked about the impact i'm sarah brush i live at two bedford street so i'm the very first house um, right on the corner. And I think one of my biggest concerns is living there, I see all the accidents that happen all the time. Um, it's a huge, it's a visibility issue. It's also a problem because there's a stop sign that everyone runs that's in North Andover, but then they go into Haverhill. So I just didn't know if we could possibly do some traffic studies from both North Andover and Haverhill on the intersection before we introduce tractor trailers into the mix. Um, just because visibility-wise, it's, it's a big issue. Um, so are you saying the, it's the uh, stop sign that's the corner of 125 and Bradford Street? Yes, that's yep. right there. So if people are coming up to the stop sign, some people are, because there's a Y. So some people, if they're turning on to 125 and they're taking a left, they'll take the Y left. Other people will go straight, and there's a telephone pole there. So there's already a visibility issue, but if you're introducing tractor trailer to that, especially if they're going to the left, I'm just concerned about the visibility because right. people pull out and they just get. So the the issue right at the corner of the, are you saying there's a utility pole? Yes, yeah. yeah. in the middle of the yeah. island between the, the Y at the end of Bradford right. Street, there's Can a big utility that? pole. Is it that. possible to see that? Yeah, so we don't. Do you see that the utility pole in that on island the left, on, right on 125? It's up at the very top. Is that, is that it? This here? Or no. there? No. Oh, up right there. there. Yeah. Right, up at the top. right at the very, very top, top of the screen. Where's the stop sign? You can't see it, it's cut off. Yeah. Oh, it's up further. Yeah. Yep. There's really two. There's so one. So the street goes like this, and you can turn like right where the trees are? Yep. Or right yeah. where you can go straight. Turn? Yep. Is that. Or Taking a right, is that a road? Is that a way? Yes, there's a, there's a Y there. That, could speak that doesn't walking. look like it's paved. It is. Yeah. The yeah. trees yeah. are just walking. Yeah. 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 I see it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show it to you, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I've been showing it to you the whole time. Oh, can you? Oh, that's that's the, uh, the yeah. Dave, we'll pass that back. <laughs> He's looking at this is, but they shouldn't have that, too. No. They should only have one. Right. Yeah, so there it is. There's the problem. Dave, you broke my computer. So that's, that's the problem. That's, that's the problem. The problem. part's the problem. Yeah, yeah. this is fine because yeah. it's uh, perfectly yeah. good, but it's that part's the problem. Peter, is this what you, you're projecting? Just so we have it. Yeah. Uh, similar image because yeah. we have to put this in the record now, so I just want to make sure we're looking at it. Yeah, project. that's exactly what okay. we're talking about. Okay, that's yeah. perfect. That shows it very, this very well. Yes. Thank it. you. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the problem here is the why. Uh, it's the double. 
it's the double out here. That's that's the thing that's the problem. I mean, there's multiple problems that I don't know what we're going to solve tonight. But I have no idea. The poll is in North Andover. The poll is in North Andover. Well, the stop signs are both in North Andover. Yeah, the stop signs are both. Right. The roadways in North Andover. So the problem a lot of times is, as far as I mean, I'm speaking for a policing standpoint, I don't know, but they run the stop sign or they can't see at the stop sign and there's an accident, there's a jurisdiction issue. So, because the stop sign is in North Andrew, but once they go through the intersection, they're in Haverhill, which is why I was saying if we do do a traffic study, if we can do that from both towns, would be beneficial because it's kind of split between the two. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, uh, typically from a planning perspective, mm -hmm. yeah, this is from the, the planning board, we do traffic studies when the uh, volume impact of the specific project mm -hmm. is sufficient that it might change the level of service. It gets into sort of technical sort of things. It, this, I think the circumstance is a little bit different because the, the big uh, issue here, I think, is the externality. It's the way the, the street goes here, which is a broader issue and it's not mm -hmm something that's solely related to this property. It, the problem, you know, arguably would exist regardless of whether this was all woods there or... And I, I understand that. And I think, you know, if what they're saying is, is true and it's only a couple trucks a day, it's not going to have a major impact. But is there something that's going to hold them to that? What if they have multiple trucks all day long coming out? Then it is going to create a traffic, traffic problem, traffic flow problem. Um, you know, a year from now, they could say, oh, well, we're already in, you know, let's up our amount of trucks and deliveries, and we, I feel like, have no say in that at that time if it's already been approved. And I have one more comment. I know that there have been traffic studies done through the North Andover Police Department, so you may want to look into that. Yeah, fair enough. I'm, uh, who did we talk to in the police department? Because Lieutenant Gray is the one that signed the letter, I believe. Lieutenant Gray submitted the letter. Okay. Uh, can we go back? I mean, it's and to see if they're planning on doing anything more broadly with this intersection uh, at this time. It may not be on our the planned stuff yeah. Yeah. that they're planning or working on, or they don't perceive this as one of the bigger issues. But you can ask them as well, DPW, if they have yeah. any type of roadway improvement plan. Yeah. 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 And see if we would never allow the, the parking spaces to go right off to the road like that, even across the street, which is a problem. You mean where the houses are? Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to hand over, though. I know, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's a bad thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's compounding there. You're right, yeah. Yeah, because you have to back out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which is partly what makes it more complicated if there's only going to be one road. Yeah. yeah, but it might actually make it better for those houses because then they could, you know, if, if you... Yeah. If you eliminated that and just deeded the land of the people yeah, yeah. that live there, you would, uh, you would have, they would have a driveway. Yeah. Uh, but who knows if that would ever happen. So, Can you put the image um, back up where you have the figures of the truck? I have a question about that, too. Um, as far as the trucks backing up into the loading dock, are they going to be beeping and making noises? I know it's going to be during the day. We have a lot of first responders that live right in that area that sleep during the day and then work at night. Yeah. Um, so that would be I mean, disruptive it, to their lifestyle to, as well. I'm sure when you back up a truck, you have to, it has to beep, doesn't it? Did the truck tractor trailers have to have reverse beep? Did the tractor trailers have to have the reverse beeps on them when they're in reverse backing up? alerts I believe they do they did mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so. I would think that that's so we think the answer to that would be yes okay. but fair point okay. so yes uh, yeah. Yeah. You, if you could yes. identify yes. yourself hi and, yes uh, um, tell us where you live Paula Macor and Rioli um, I live at 15 Bradford Street my parents actually built in 1957 so I could write a book about the street I'm the longest resident on Bradford Street um, but it wasn't a dirt road when you lived there, was it? I mean, I'm not laughing, but further down, it is a dirt road. It used to be. It was a dirt road, road yeah. and the Mazarenko farm was there, and there was right. Chad, uh, Chadwick's stand at the bottom of the street. So I go, I go way back. Matter of fact, I think yeah. we were classmates at Kittredge. Really? <laughs> yes. <Wow. laughs> Mrs. Donovan. <laughs> Mrs. Eldridge. And Miss Eldridge, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> in any case, um, 
firstly, I'd like to say I don't believe that Haverhill residents of Bradford Street were notified. Um, not? I mentioned it to Sue and uh, a little bit of a team effort notifying the Haverhill side of the road. Um, so there might have been, you know, th there might not even have been the attendance there is tonight. Um, my concern is the traffic in general on the street, which has already been addressed. But with the, there's continuous traffic on the road. It's a, a road, in my opinion, that isn't sufficiently wide to be wide enough to be a two-lane street. When they recently repaved it, they put a saw, two double lines on the road. Um, so you could have four cars going up, three cars coming down constantly. There will be absolute gridlock at the bottom of the street when the tractor trail is back in and out. There will be a lot of congestion on 125 at the bottom to take for the truck to uh, do what it has to do. Um, I'm also concerned that this might encourage other large tractor trailers for, for driving on Bradford Street and maybe using that as an access onto 125 so the traffic could be even worse. And then if business goes well for these gentlemen, again, they could expand, they could have more trucks and by then the, their foot is in the door and uh, we'll, have nothing, we'll have nothing to say about it. So I'm concerned with um, the noise, the traffic, the danger. It's going to be very dangerous. There's I almost got in an accident on the water, uh, the water tower a couple days ago. Um, you could be coming down. People go very fast off 125, coming off 495, and you can almost hit head on. And it's but if it's, this it's again, if this property were not here, uh, you would have most of the problem. Like granted, there may be an element with a, a certain number of tractor trailers that are not there today, but everything else you talked about still exists today and would exist regardless. So some of, uh, my point is some of your comments are related to this property, some of them are more broadly put. Uh, more broadly put, yes. Yeah. But there is going to be congestion at the bottom of the street with people coming on and off of Bradford Street waiting for the tractor trailer to to exit and enter. It's, it's going to make more congestion at yeah. the bottom of the street and backing up I on 125. The building is really large enough to handle a continuous flow of trucks. Well, why do they need such big trucks? Can't they have smaller trucks and go to a distribution area? I mean, is it? Well, the trucks at Elcom used were much smaller. They were mm -hmm. the more compact trucks. You never heard them. I don't know what that. I mean, if this is a more <laughs> fabricating Did job, you right? Here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Our products come in from around the United States, and we just assemble it. We don't do any manufacturing. Okay. We so just do assembly. So uh, assembly. Boxes and stones and steel come in from different parts of the country, and we do final assembly of that box. That's all. Okay. And it, does anybody else have a question? Um, First, I, I never heard of Kettle Pizza until I Googled it today. It looks really cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you guys don't want to move in the old Lucent Tech building with the other guy? Yeah, really. Plenty of space space <laughs> yeah. Right next to Jessica's bread, you know? There's plenty of room. Good synergy. I, I, too, live on the corner. We're in the duplex, Sarah and I. And um, I moved there. My name's Gina Jingleberry. I'm at Fort Bradford Street. I moved there about a year ago. And um, I'm currently there. Every time a tractor trailer drives down 125, my whole house shakes. It shakes. Mm -hmm. Last night I'm watching TV and the glasses, you can hear them hitting each other. And never mind a business using tractor trailers right in front of my house, driving right in front of my house. I, I, I can't fathom, honest to God, if I knew that was part of the deal, I would have never moved into that house. Um, I don't have children, but if I did, that would be another issue. I don't. I personally would rather not hear the trucks beeping out in front of my house. I don't care how many times a day. <laughs> It's just, it's my home. I want to be comfortable in my home and relax in my home. Um, my question is, once that tractor goes onto Bradford Street, is it taking a left or right on 125? Depends which way they go, I guess. Yeah. How do they take a right on 125 when people are flying down past mm -hmm. Rogers Springs? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same way. Left. You would be... Uh, <laughs> no, if they're, if they're on, are they, that orange truck is on Bradford Street, 
Yeah. So when it goes to Osgood, is it taking a left or a right? If it took a right, it would go toward April. Correct. It could we? And that would be a lot of accidents mm -hmm. happening over there. Well, it's, it's, it's a little bit. Very, very uh, dangerous. Street yeah, I think it's a race. That's right. On Bradford Street, probably at least once a day. As a shortcut. <laughs> yes, right. you and everybody else. In my, in my, in my truck. Yes. <laughs> and, I'm just saying, people fly down. You know, I make a right. And it's that's the easiest thing. I would be afraid to try to make a left there, frankly. I've almost gotten to so many head-on collisions. They're going to work in the morning. It's so I've bad. Well, let me uh, let me ask you this um, again. And in, in, in terms of the peak traffic, is it typical? Sort of what you would expect a morning and evening rush. Where are the peak times? I know it's, all it's constant because they come down from 495. Is, they come out of Firewood Green and turn up the road. But I mean, it, my point ends up being is it from 7:30 to 9 o'clock in the morning, or there more than at 11 o'clock in the morning. I think it's all day long. I mean, I can't. Yeah, but I can't. Like a, but, but, it, but, it's but why does it matter yeah, if there yeah. are people sleeping during the day and there are people sleeping during the but, but there is but traffic all day long. You can't even. That and this is where you got to help us because we're dealing with three or four issues here. Mm -hmm. We're actually doing the selectmen's work a little bit here, and you know because there's issues outside this property. But I'm, I'm trying to get a sense because somebody talked about queuing. Well, queuing makes a difference during peak loads, but we know from common sense and from experience of any traffic study we have ever done is there's a morning rush and an evening rush that's heavier. There might be a like a mid-afternoon rush if you're right next door to a school or something like that. But the point ends up being is if you can give us some idea of when the peak loads are. Well, I bet the traffic report can tell you, because, I mean, the, the police report can tell you when all the accidents happen. So I'm going to do a quick analysis as to they happen during this. And I'm not... I'm just being honest. Well, yeah. not home. Rush hour is bad, but Sunday, there's traffic yeah, all day Sunday. long, and there's no one's going to work on a Sunday. Yeah. But, I mean, if no, the traffic's already bad, now we're adding an 18 wheeler that can't go as fast as a car. You're, you're backing up more traffic. You're, it's, well, you're that's actually going to slow down traffic, and actually, in all honesty, if you slow down traffic, you will have less accidents. I mean, Well, yeah. it's going to cause just congestion. It's it'll cause it's, congestion, it's, but you don't have to be fast. I don't want to feel my house shake any more than it shakes with the tractor trailers driving I mean, it's a residential street. I don't think we need to. I mean, but, but fundamentally, if you want uh, traffic off of Bradford Street, you don't want traffic on Bradford Street, the only thing you can possibly do is make the other section of the road go back to a dirt road, but that's not never going to happen. So, like it or not, you're going to have people are going to do that. And unless you put, you know, it's virtually impossible. You could possibly put some restrictions on commercial vehicles through the neighborhood at certain times during the day, but. Beyond that, are just the pure. Are allowed to drive on residential streets? Of course they yeah. are. Yeah. People get deliveries and. Don't they have to pay if they're going to drive on? No. They have to pay a certain amount of time. So. I mean, I question whether they should ever have put that building there to begin with. Uh, in a residential. It's probably been there at least 40 or 50 years, I would think. No, it hasn't been there 40 or 50 years. It, it hasn't it's been, been I know it's been more than 30 years, so. Um, it's been 30 years ago. Ultimately, it's a residential neighborhood. Right. And you're talking about putting tractor trailers in a residential neighborhood. Okay. Uh, any other new questions? If you can come up. Uh, Hi, my name is Carrie Vesquezi. I live at 62 Bradford Street. Um, just a, a few questions, and I do want to reiterate all the traffic concerns because I do have two infants, um, three and one, and I am concerned. I don't let my kids play in the front yard, um, as it is, regardless, without tractor trailers, trucks from a new company going up the street because it is a very, very busy street. Um, a few concerns I have. Um, is there anything that's going to be preventing, if you look at this diagram, when trucks come in from 125 and they kind of loop around, is there anything that's going to prevent them from taking a right to go up Bradford Street? So let's say these tractor trailer drivers are not aware or they don't want to pull down. Is there anything that's going to prevent them from going up Bradford Street? You mean out exiting through, like, further to, up? To go all the way to 133, yeah. correct. Okay, that's what you're asking. Yes, yeah, so so, uh, so that's that's one issue. If, if, if this is just going to be a turnaround, then is there any sort of signage that we can put? Or can we educate drivers? Or is it going to be the same drivers? Or is it different drivers? So driver education is a concern of mine. If we just have 
is, is there going to be any knowledge for the drivers to know that? Well, I mean, I, it, it, there's two parts to it. Uh, one, you would know better than I, but I uh, exactly how often commercial vehicles, large commercial vehicles, ride on South Bradford Street all the way over 133. Quite often. Uh, yeah. if, if indeed they do, I think you can make a legitimate argument that they shouldn't be on that road anyway because it's, it's the ultimate country road in North Andover. Um, so we could see, and we probably have to get the, the police department, we could ask them if they have any appetite for no right-hand turns for commercial vehicles out of the property. Thank you for considering that. Along those same lines, um, traffic coming out of that street, I leave for work in the morning at 7 a.m. with two kids in the car. Taking a left-hand turn to get onto 125 from Bradford Street is very difficult. I just drive an SUV. I'm not a tractor trailer. So that's at 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock, the traffic is still pretty heavy. Um, in, I come home around 4 o'clock, and if I want to leave, um, I can't take a left-hand turn. It takes me a little bit to sit there. So my concern, along with other residents of the street, is what is the backup going to be like trying to take a left-hand turn if you're waiting behind a tractor trailer? How long will it take for a tractor trailer to get to pull onto 125? Um, and again, is there any way that we can tell the tra tractor trailers to not take a left-hand turn, that they must take a right-hand turn? So that's another um, but that question. But make them go down Bradford Street. No. They're already going right on, on, on to right take a right on to 125. 125. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so going towards sitting in front of my house, my house idling, 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 mm -hmm. shaking everything in the house. Either way, <laughs> either way, <laughs> like, right? My house is still shaking. Right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Snowy weather also is a concern. I mean, there's lots of accidents. It's a, that that street's on a hill, um, so the the base of that street is very icy. Um, so if that's something that, you know, if we know that this tractor trailers entering and exiting, um, you know, these, I'm just voicing our concerns because we have these concerns anyway, regardless of um, tractor trailers coming in and out. So it, it, it does get very icy. Um, and I had the same issue about, about queuing in, in, in front of people's houses and, and what the impact would that be on the residents. Um, so I also question that. And my final question would be, um, for, when Elcom was there, there was just smaller box trucks that were backing into the loading dock. So. I'm questioning the the size and the um, ab ability for a tractor trailer to back in. I don't know if you've ever seen this loading dock, but if you look um, and looking at these drawings, it's hard to visualize how a tractor trailer would actually be able to back in without blocking Bradford Street and still stay on their property. Oh, the I had uh, a class one license in Illinois when I was going to college, and I mean it isn't that hard. You'd block, you'd shut it. You'd block off Bradford for a little bit. But, but but look at that. There's not that much space between that loading dock and, if I'm correct, you're not changing any of that, or you are. Which garage Sorry. door is the loading dock? The one on the left the one or the right? Left. Further away from you, Peter. The smaller one towards 125. Is the loading dock? Yes. Correct. Okay. What is the garage door to the left? It's a entrance into the warehouse. Like and the UPS loading UPS dock is yes. the door to the right. That's an elevated loading dock, so when the truck pulls in, it's level with the floor. Correct. Okay. So. And has there been any investigation with the people that are delivering the stuff, whether they can use smaller trucks? Or is this the first time that question's been raised? We don't, when we control order for delivery, they send the truck that's in the area for that particular company picking up the supplies. We don't request a large truck, a big truck. They bring the truck that is for the load that's going out. I, I mean, I just know when I was living in New York City, a big moving truck was bringing my stuff from Chicago to New York and it couldn't come into New York City. So they had to go to a place, move into a smaller truck, and then bring that into the city to bring my stuff. Is that? I mean, are they doing that potentially for other deliveries? And they could do that for yours? I don't know. I mean, it's uh, part of the problem ends up being is that if it makes it uneconomical <coughs> to do business by doing yeah. that, uh, it's, you know, it has yeah. consequences. You've got two union drivers mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. So, um, are there any, any more questions? I, I, I thank you all for your comments. I mean, this is. It's a difficult uh, issue here. We, there are certain things that we can do and there are certain things we can't do. Uh, 
But I think we've listened carefully to what you said. Um, I, we, I think what we will do is let's go back to, uh, I think, the police department. I think that's really the biggest single piece. And, you know, I'm even thinking that it might be a good idea to go actually out there someday uh, and look and see what's going on out there and, you know, do it in conjunction with people, whether we do it on a Saturday or sometime during the week and, and maybe have the police department out while it happens and, and somebody from DPW out where it happens because I think part of what's going on here, you know, is it's, it's on the site and if the site's not handled well, it could make the situation worse. But there is the, right. the problem, the already existing problem that's here. So, can I ask the applicant another question? Yeah, John? sure. Could you put the schematic back up with the uh, diagrams of the trucks? So, two questions. Mm -hmm. First, is that the only loading dock in the building? Yes. yes. And it's the only opportunity for a loading dock in the building? Yes. Okay. Second question. You're removing, or you're adding pavement. You're removing a uh, grassed area and adding pavement where the upper yellow truck is shown, right? To give you a better turning radius. Sure. Have you considered, um, if you're already taking that removal action, instead of uh, <coughs> removing the grass area and adding pavement to give a better turning radius onto Bradford, have you considered removing <coughs> such that you would have an adequate turning radius and removing a couple parking spots to get out onto 125 instead? I understand that as currently shown, you don't have a radius to turn out onto 125. But my question is, did you consider whether or not you could reconfigure that lot to allow for a turning radius onto 125 rather than a turning radius onto Bradford. And it may, it may be that you've considered and, there, and you don't have the dimension. I don't know, I'm just asking. Are you suggesting within the same curb cut or two curb cuts now? For going on to 125? Yeah. Well, you're already modifying the curb cut to come in off 125, and so part of the question is to also allow going out on to 125. Just a question. Okay. We're not modifying the curb cut. is already there. It's been there since when the building Exists. was first done. So we're not... All we're doing is from where the darker shade is coming off 125 is making the grade again where it's easier for trucks to come back in now okay. as it was. But you're not, so not you're not adding that angle where the dotted turquoise line is. That already exists. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The reason we're, and we're very sensitive, we want to be good neighbors. Uh, you know, we've hopefully been there for a long time. We want to be very sensitive. When we went out to look at it, um, to repurpose the building so it's not vacant, is that by taking out that if you could put the slide back up with the uh, the overhead of what we're going to do with the trucks would be helpful. When well, you see the second yellow truck turning up that way, we did that so the truck, when it exits, really minimizes pulling up straight. It will have to go out onto the roadway slightly so it can back into the dock, but we removed that pump there so it wouldn't go straight across to the homes. So we'd have a better turning radius to get back out onto Bradford Street. We looked at it for several months on which was the best way. And I have been there when the truck, moving truck, the Elcom was there, and it was a 75 footer, which is the longest truck they make, they're the sleeper trucks. And that backed all the way into the dock without the nose being on to Bradford Street. And you can check the dimensions, because I was there, yeah, I took pictures of it, because I wanted to see how that gentleman came in off 125 and put a 75 foot long hauler rig into that loading dock. And these are professional drivers. They drive tens of thousands of miles a month to do it. And I can assure you, the tractor trailers that will actually be going the slowest will be those coming in and out of that driveway. I've been there and watched for hours tractor trailers go 
both directions on 125, and they're going a lot faster than that. Five miles an hour, they'll be coming out of our driveway to, to get on to 125. Can I finish? With all certainty, it's very unlikely that a truck that comes to pick up our product, what they're going to be looking to do is either to get back going into North Andover or going back to the connector to get on 495 North or South. These are trucks that have to get back to distribution centers. There's really no reason for them to try to take a right hand turn to go up Bradford Street towards the water tower for 133. I can't guarantee that, but I, with some certainty, saying that they're going to want to be getting back out into the highway as soon as they can. Just as a, another comment, John, I, I take the point about large trucks versus small trucks. I am glad that the applicant is showing the worst case of the largest trucks. It doesn't mean that they yeah. will always be largest. I would have a bigger concern if your diagram was showing a little tiny truck and not telling us that it could be a big truck. So at least, you know, you're being transparent and it's good for us to all see what the worst case is. So, mm -hmm. you know, thank you for doing that. Hey, John, a couple of things to uh, <clears throat> comment on from the, the comments that were made. You know, it was mentioned that the folks in Haverhill particularly uh, live in a residential, residentially zoned district. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that abuts an industrial zone district in North Andover. So you always have that sort of conflict, as you know, when the residential neighborhood abuts an industrial one. The, the other issue is when, when George approached me on just doing this little modification to the uh, exit was that, you know, that building can be used as it is without that modification being made to the driveway, in which case we wouldn't be here, right? And you could still have the same kind of trucks come in, but it's more difficult for them to maneuver, but particularly it's more difficult for the people on Bradford Street because without that extra turning radius, the trucks are getting pushed over to the other side of the street, to the Haverhill side of the street when they exit. So f from our point of view, we're trying to improve the situation that we have for the neighborhood versus creating something that they wouldn't have if this doesn't get approved. If this doesn't get approved, the trucks are still going to come in. There's, there's still going to be an operation there, but it'll be harder for them to maneuver to get out. We try to be proactive um, in doing facility type of work and things like that with large trucks for a while. I know in the last five years that we've done it, the reason our business has grown is, uh, you know, we make a good product. We wanted to be proactive in making sure that when the trucks were there, that we were very sensitive to the neighbors across the street. We want to be good neighbors. And that's why I had Phil show exactly what was going to happen without anything, uh, any, any surprises. So I do appreciate um, input. Yes, thank you. I think it, it was a good cordial discussion. I think everybody, I think people make good points and we'll do the best we can. We were not dealt the best hand here, uh, unfortunately, but I think we appreciate your willingness to listen and the willingness sure. people do. There's also the comment about that intersection, particularly the people going right into Haverhill. <clears throat> and you see that situation a lot when you have a street that isn't a 90 degree angle. You know, the 90 right. degree intersection, people have to stop. They have to stop, yeah. right. Once yeah, you exactly. have that, where they can just bleed and off to the right. It is interesting because virtually every non-90 degree angle in North Andover has been changed to 90 degrees. So, right. I can't so if an improvement were to be made so here, that would that's be my <laughs> That's my point, is that I think outside of this, that there's probably a need to do something like that. Um, and maybe this will precipitate that, although it won't be the exact same time. I, I wanted to get back to one point, and, and I don't want to put you on the spot uh, too much, but again, roughly, uh, what is the frequency of deliveries? And I know it's not exact, but you know, what are we talking about? Band. Of certainly, our peak time is April, May, and June. You know, leading up to Father's Day. Yeah. Um, you know, we slow down in July and August and then pick up in the fall again, uh, probably October to Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, other times we get most of our pickups and deliveries 
uh, from small FedEx box size trucks that will be going to the larger garage overhead door. Um, the majority of our boxes do ship out by uh, UPS or right. FedEx trucks. Our supplies come in by the larger trucks and then our larger orders go out by the 18 wheelers. So. But, but again, and I, I'm not trying to pin you down, or but I'm trying to get some idea of the range of, I mean, or I know you said, uh, and you wouldn't be limited to it, but is it uh, two or three a week, or what, did, I, I just don't remember what you said before. No, at least, no, a couple of, it could be a couple of days, and sometimes okay. more. And what, okay, at your peak time. Do you have any um, flexibility of time of day? We have, uh, because we close it, because we close at 4.30, we require pickups between 1 and 4 p.m. It must take a certain amount of time to load a tractor trailer, a full-size trailer. Well, I hope we're loading full-size tractor trailers all the time. Right, but yeah. usually, yeah. It, it's yeah, usually, it's, a box, right? um, usually tractor trailers will, you know, drop off four to five pallets, which we are more quickly. They don't want to be there any longer than they have to, or we load them accordingly. Um, you know, I don't think we've ever put more than 10 or 12 pallets on a truck at a time, uh, and that is that is rare. So 10 to 12 pallets, half an hour? Load yeah, times? probably about so, that. So you are limited by the, you only have one loading dock. So even in the best case scenario, business was booming, you couldn't put more than 16 trucks in the business day. But load on load time. Tractor well, that, yeah, especially if they're picking up it's only yeah. a three hour window. Yeah. You know? so. And they do, and that's pickup time. We ask for okay. pickup and deliveries. Now some do come earlier if they have an empty. Yeah. But uh, my, my point a little bit was that you have any flexibility if we said, look, uh, we'd really not want to have one of these large trucks come before 8.30 in the morning. Uh, is that a problem? No, because um, we don't open until 8.30. We don't, we wouldn't accept, uh, okay. we wouldn't have anybody to uh, unload it at that time. Uh, okay. Because we have to act. But as you get more prosperous, you could so it. Well, if they get more prosperous, they move to a bigger building. Yeah, we move. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, um, and usually the smaller trucks deliver loads early in the morning. Uh, that's been customary for our business. Yeah. I wouldn't expect that to change. So, uh, so I would just, because I think we've been, uh, we're at the point where I think we could finish it off tonight. I, you know, again, I, I do appreciate everybody's cordial approach to this. I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to see if we could finish it up next time because it's fair as fair. But I would like to see if we could do, do something out on site if you didn't mind, and it might address some of the larger issues. But let's see if we can get the uh, you know the police department out there and DPW out there just to look at the general area in it. Including the board, do you want us to say? Well, yeah, I mean, let's okay. no, either we do it if it's a problem getting them on Saturday, we'll do it sometime during the week, and you know, uh, That's fine. okay. Um, one of the things that we can do, even if we do this, is one of the things I sort of like to do because you know, when you do site plan reviews, you can never figure everything out, is maybe you know put our conditions in place and then say, let's do a review in three months or something. And you know, we could, we could revisit and see if there's any specific problems and issues, um, um, something like that. I don't know if anybody else has any other sort of ideas of things we might be able to figure out how to make the situation here better. Just, I, I didn't, I'm not sure I got an answer to my question as to whether you ever looked at the geometry of being able to turn out onto 125. I did not. I did not. Yeah, and just by looking at that plan right there, you would have to remove. And you would have to make that driveway even larger, going out onto 125. And I'm just guessing that that would involve probably much more extensive work with the state. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, and I appreciate. State. I appreciate you responding yeah. to it. I mean, when I look at it, I can. 
understand why you're not doing it. I yeah. just wanted to ask what your thoughts were. You know, it would certainly be something to look at. I know that the those parking spaces that are required up on top there would have to be removed. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that would cause another problem with something with the building because we didn't have enough parking spaces. I think that was a requirement to have so many parking spaces with that size building. So. Okay. Uh, okay, just as far as the mailing, we typically do currency mailing, um, regular mail. We did send certified mail, so we noticed the typical 300 foot radius to the property. So if somebody was outside of 300, they may not have gotten it. Some people said they did receive it. Um, so it was mailed. Okay. So, okay. okay. Great. And we will be back at our next meeting, which is June seven. June seven. Yeah. Okay. And if anybody has questions or comments, you can call the planning department. Gina Rebecca will be glad to talk to you if you wanted to follow up on anything. For my wife, who will be interested, what does that mean? Sell. Retail. Particular kit. Retail. Hundred ninety nine dollars. This one. Last one you ever got. If anyone spoke tonight and did not sign, would you please sign with a shared address for the record? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, uh, we are going to do a discussion at the 1600 uh, Osgood Street, Osgood Solar, because I believe we're going to have an application coming up, and this is a preview, which is a good idea. Right, so, um, so this is a discussion related to a recently filed site plan review uh, special permit application. On Friday, May 6th, that application was received for a 3.6 megawatt ground mounted solar system on the property of 1600 Oscar Street. Um, the scope of the project would include some demolition of outbuildings and storage tanks on the property as well. Um, the application was filed under 8.3, so I can review. You have a copy of that application in your packet. Um, a conceptual plan or a sketch plan was provided, and that's the amount of information at this time. So there is supplemental uh, filings that are required for this application. The applicant, I believe, hopes to have that. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that at this point, um, we'll get this in the record and on file, and we'll file it with the clerk's office as well. Yeah, um, good. But the, the, the application, two pages, was time stamped in. Um, the application itself, is filed on 8 3. The applicant, do you tend to speak to site plan special permit or not? No, thank you. No? Uh, oh, oh. Well, I'll have to broach that. We've provided a draft legal notice noticing this as a special permit under 8 3, which our bylaw does require. The applicant, you have the application um, there of the opinion that site plan review does not require a special permit. Um, yes, I see that. Uh, so site plan review, and we're going to apply the standards that we always do for site plan review. So, that bylaw indicates that uh, it's by the plan and void by special permit. So, um, it, so, I mean, it is what it is, and we're going to do it the yeah, same way. That's we're fine. Any other one. I provided a draft legal notice that needs to be the Tribune by Friday. The applicant will hopefully be for Thursday. I'm sorry, it needs to be the Thursday. I think technically Friday is acceptable. We've always advised Thursday. So we just need to confirm that um, draft and get it into final mode at this point. Um, we had a TRC. Comments were supplied by the Conservation Department, building, planning, fire. Uh, I think it was a really good discussion. Again, the reason for holding off on some of this additional material was to incorporate some of those comments. That meeting was held on May 11th. Um, so if you'd like, Dan Larry is here to provide the conceptual plan. Okay, quick. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Leary, and this is Rick Waite with Meridian Associates, um, site civil engineer. Um, so thank you for having us back. Um, we uh, spent the last several months looking very closely at the opportunity for solar at Osgood 
landing and um, in, in looking and in, in hearing the community's uh, thoughts over the last year, we've put together a plan which we think would be beneficial. Um, uh, frankly, we think this is a win-win. Um, this is a project that can be, um, if, if, if it can be permitted, can be built this year um, and would, would provide substantial benefit to the town and, and to the property. So one of the uh, main topics for discussion besides sort of presenting what the project would look like, because I understand this is just a discussion, we're not yet at the, uh, at the point of presenting the full plan. Um, we're very interested in, in feedback about how to get from here to um, uh, permits in hand, um, namely because we have a really uh, critical deadline as always, uh, this project um, needs to be turned on by the end of the year for the, for the, the sort of the, the financial benefit to be realized um, for, for all the parties that would be involved. Um, so here we are in, in June, or okay, it's May, but I think it's June, mm -hmm. and we have uh, about 17,000 solar panels that we're still proposing to put on site. And um, we really would appreciate your feedback about how to get from here to there. So I'll do just give a quick overview of, of, of what we're talking about um, with this scope. So in this scope, it's still a six megawatt project. Uh, approximately 2.4 of those megawatts would be on the roof. And, um, uh, and the other 3.6 would be on the ground. Uh, a key part of putting these on the ground includes um, demolition, site improvements to the property that we think, uh, again, is part of a win-win scenario. Uh, on the south side of the property is a, a lot of antiquated equipment used to support the, the manufacturing facility that's no longer in use. And it's, uh, it's not serving a purpose other than to uh, sort of use up land. And we believe that by demolishing that and, and relocating uh, the tractor trailer school to that area, that we can uh, create opportunity to put solar uh, almost exclusively to the west and a little bit to the northwest of the building and keep it all completely out of sort of uh, out of the, the front of the, the building. So this, this plan has no carports. Um, it's just ground mounted solar and roof mounted solar. Um, Re Rebecca, if, if, if it would be possible on, on that thumb drive, is, is it, so we, have, we do have a couple of updated plans. Um, So Dan spoke to the roof piece. Um, as far as the application for site plan, it's really for the ground mounted, and the intent on the roof piece would to be to proceed with the building permit um, department for that approval. And I didn't see any issue with it, but I just wanted to table it for the board. Um, Dan and I had discussion related to the height of those on the roof. They would not exceed 18 inch height, and they wouldn't be visible for the ground, and I could annotate that within the building permit. Um, it would still go through planning for signature, but it, it has been separated out of this application. So, okay. Thank, thank you. So, um, in, so on that thumb drive, we have uh, there's a couple of files. Um, there's a folder called Planning Board. Uh, five, seventeen, sixteen. There's a folder, and there is the. Um, just wait, take a second. Yep. Sorry. There's oh, no, that's all right. Planning. You said it was planning board? Yes. And then which file are you looking to display? There's, I'll take a look at that. There's four of them. Yeah, there's four of them. SM. This one? The very top one. If I can get that onto the com chrome. Okay. So this is where we print out copies, just in case. Um, I'll pass these out in a moment. Um, I can get it if you give me a second. Okay, thank you. Um, so it, I guess as part of um, our, our discussion tonight, we do have a, a, a number of uh, questions that have to do with how to um, best navigate the, the permitting process. 
Um, of course, we welcome any feedback on, on, the, on the design and the layout as we have it. But um, as we talk about the, the project itself, um, we're proposing uh, <coughs> keeping the roof part aside because it's just, I, I think, is uh, possibly a, a non-issue from a site plan perspective. Um, the, the ground mount, um, which was formally proposed as a carport canopy, uh, this ground mount is going to be uh, uh, ballasted, non-penetrating, non-disturbing, modular, and about waist high. Um, we, we went to great lengths to try and, and put in a system that would be um, able to be moved when there is a, there's a better use for that land. Um, so this is, this is uh, a system that can be put on the roof, which is one of the things we discussed in the past. So if there is a, a better opportunity for that land uh, to, to put up a building, this could actually be relocated um, in, 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 in modular. So it's perfect. Perfect. So the, the ground mount arrays that we're proposing are on the western side. Thanks, Rick. Oh, uh, doesn't work. The visible laser. Good idea. <laughs> There's a uh, to, to the far to the to the left, which is the west. Right there. The, yeah, perfect thing. Um, is the Nets parking lot, uh, the current Nets parking lot. So that area is proposed to, to be a ground mount system that's placed right on the pavement. Again, uh, uh, ballasted, non-disturbing system. Uh, the other ground mount is up to the north of the building, um, which is the same uh, construction method, just placed on pavement. The other two uh, red areas you see there are rooftop and, and um, really not the focus of tonight's discussion, I think, unless you have any comments. Um, so this this plan right here is what we're calling um, uh, areas that we think would be the most the, the areas that would be the simplest to permit and possibly the most expedient to permit. Um, additionally, we've proposed uh, some other areas uh, to the northwest side of the building, um, which we'll, I'll discuss that in a little bit. On, on the second slide. Um, shows an overview of what we're proposing uh, to, to demolish. Um, if you could go down one, one okay, page. It's a large bio. It's just going to take a while to move it around. That's no problem. So in the red area below, this is um, uh, uh, essentially where we're proposing to relocate nets. So in the middle of that is where you have the, um, the equipment that'll that'll be demolished, a site that'll be repaved, and um, relocate uh, area made available to relocate the tractor trailer school. Just wanted to pass around a few images of what that looks like from the street level. Is, is that all right? I've got three copies of the exact same thing. Great. So this is a, uh, a, a photo taken from uh, the, the eastern part of the parking lot. Uh, so if you were going to be walking into the, the town offices or something, looking to the west, and the, on the this is on the south east side of that. Is it, does anybody not know exactly where that's taken? I can go up there and point to the screen. I'll point anyways. That's where where cursor is, right? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So, so our first question is um, with respect to demolition. Does demolition of this equipment in the photograph require site plan review, or is this a um, a, a demolition permit, so separate from what we're going to be. I, I don't think so, because if you were just demolishing it for the sake of demolishing it, it would never come to the planning board. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Okay. an acre or more, it would yeah, constitute a land disturbance. That's right. not an acre. That's what I was just asking. Yeah. Um, oh, it's less than an acre, correct? Yeah. Okay. So that's not your current. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I frankly, I would be more, the only concern I would have, and I think it's out of scope for us, but uh, if you're going to demolish it, make sure there's no nasty stuff in those buildings. Right. So I asked the building commissioner if his code would make sure that they oversaw licensed site professionals if they were required and all the certifications for hazardous material. He said they do. Um, I don't think there's any type of stormwater structures here that would be impacted in this specific area. So I think I'm not sure if you're going to still continue to talk about demolition in the rear. Talk about that next. Okay. Yeah. But this area I thought was one that maybe be able to pull out a site plan review and be managed through the building department. Um, if yeah, you, the if demolition. I mean, obviously, what happens after it's demolished yeah. and if it's we want to look at it to the extent that if it has any drainage impact, we, right. we understand what that is, or if it has any impact on the flow uh, of traffic through the property, because right. you're going to, is there going to be any well, contention be between the school and people entrance and egress? So that's, I think, what we, we want to still stay in scope right. on. Yeah. The, the future development or use of that area. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. The, the next major area for... Um, Pete, can, you had a question? Yeah. I'm sorry. I think you mentioned that when you demolished here, you would be repaving. Yes. What are you repaving? So that area is... Um, uh, so, so the area that's in the green block that's in the middle of the, the, the larger red area, um, that whole block would be paved, so it would be a continuous grade of, um, of parking of parking lot. The, the the grade would be continuous. So the green repaved, not the red. Just the green repaved. I'm sorry. Looks like green looks brown to me. Yeah. <laughs> the green outline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The top of the red. Yeah. The second major area for uh, dem demolition that's that's being considered is. Um, not shown on this this plan for the moment, and maybe we should talk about that a little bit later. But that's the um, water treatment area, which is to the to the northwest. And I'll pass around a couple of pictures of that as well. Was that circled on the previous drawing? I thought it was. I, I yes. think it is highlighted there. The, 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 these particular drawings are laid out this way. Um, intentionally to, to talk about um, what we believe may be a, a, a pathway to permitting. Um, so that, that's why we're going to kind of hit a, a few topics and then kind of wrap it up with, with, the, with the drawings at the end. Um, but this is, this is a second area. So this, is, this whole block is um, um, mostly inactive and unused. It's, it's abandoned um, water treatment. I'm not uh, water following treatment on this picture which area is So, is, is yeah, it just, just this one? Is that the one? Isn't it? So which um, area? Uh, it's 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 the whole uh, the okay. whole block. It's not the rooftops that are immediately in okay. front of you. It's it's, it's including the, it's, these. Yes. It's so this whole block. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So 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 okay. the area that's highlighted in blue um, is. Is is um, is this area back here, okay. um, with the exception of possibly these two buildings? Um, so so these these are areas that are largely uh, again concrete uh, sediment beds and remnants of a a time gone past that that no longer need to be there. Um, we call this area. Uh, possible phase two. We're showing it on uh, the area to be demolished because it, it's, uh, I, I don't think anybody on this planet wants to see that still there. Um, it would be a great place to put solar panels. Our biggest question is whether we actually have time to get this permitted and get that built by the end of the year um, because, because um, possibly unlike the, um, the south parking lot, there may be some more complexities to it, um, but uh, we'll have to better understand that so we're, we're interested in any of your feedback with respect to dem demolition of that area well what was treated there 
It says treatment facility and tanks. What was treated there? And what was in the tanks? I mean, are we talking like sewage? Sewage. sewage. They, they don't always no. want a treatment facility. Well, I mean, yeah. it was, I mean, yeah. but oh, Lucent yeah. did, and Bell Labs back in the day, there was a lot of stuff going on. But this was just sewage. And okay. part of those that equipment mm -hmm. is still functioning? Mm -hmm. so right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 there, there's a lot of infrastructure there, of which 95% of it's not in use anymore. Right. Some of it is still in use. Um, and we're not proposing to, um, to, to do anything. We're, regardless of what demolition we do, we're not going to demolish the component that's still in use in supporting the property. Um, I guess I, we, we bring this up because there is opportunity to, to make better use of that land, but we're, we, we don't have a lot of confidence that um, it, can be, it can be done in the time we need to do it, but that does not oh, mean I, we want it to. It almost seems that this is not essential to this project. You could either do it as part of this project or not. Because you're, you're not planning directly on using it uh, for this project because you're not proposing to put solar panels there. So is this just to preserve your flexibility for the future or? So, so what, what we're ultimately proposing is six megawatts that would be built in the orange areas. Um, now, if you, you can see on the north parking lot, um, the, you know, we're, we're taking up a, a considerable chunk of that parking lot that we'd rather not. If we had the uh, ability to get that western treatment plant um, demolished and brought to basically a, a gravel surface uh, at a reasonable time this year, we'd be looking to move uh, a chunk out of that northern parking lot and, and put it back onto the to, the, to that blue area. So unlike the other stuff you're taking down because it's basically the future home of the tractor trailer school, you're saying in your ideal world, if you had time, you would take some of the stuff that's on the north and you would put it. Yes. So how would rough, how would you, if you did it, how would you reconfigure it? Um, so there, we, we believe we can fit about 800, up to 800 kilowatts in that blue area that would be coming from the the eastern side um, uh, of that north, that north area, if that makes sense. So, so, so you'd be walking it away from the street. Uh, um, you'd be pushing it further. It would start closer to the back. Probably from the, the side. Property. Yeah, we, we'd we'd be looking to first create as you know, maintain as much uh, uh, active parking for the building as possible. Um, and, and then also moving it up. So that, that building that's at the very top of that array is the, is the substation. Um, it's, a, it's a massive substation. It's a 50 megawatt um, plant that supported, again, a, a, a day gone past. Um, it's, it's very large. You, you wouldn't be building systems that big anymore, but it's there. Uh, it's relatively new. And we believe that, um, you know, trying, if we, ideally, we'd be keeping the, 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 the panels to the, to the south of that. Um, and, and kind of marked off from the rest of the parking area. If you were to move the 800 megawatts, is that what it was? 800 kilowatts. kilowatts yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's all right. 800 kilowatts would fit into the blue area. Is that what you're uh, saying? Up to up to 800 kilowatts. Right. Um, 800 would represent what percentage of the red area to the north of the site? How much of that red area is is made up of the 800? Is it a quarter of it? It's it's probably about half, okay. r roughly speak roughly speaking, okay. um, and, and I say up to 800 because it, maybe the the demolition of this area is a little bit more complex. There's there's some things that are simpler and some things that are maybe more complex. So I, I I'm being genuine when I say up to 800. It it, it could be 400 by the time we we, we do a, a full analysis and. And um, can can get into it, but regardless, um, you can see the picture of what's there. Uh, it's it's antiquated, and it's it's um, it'd be a, it'd be a good place to park solar. It'd be a better place to park solar than in the parking lot. Is the owner's feeling on it? And the blue area is the area that would be demolished. Yes. But would the uh, ground solar arrays? go on both the blue area and potentially some area outside of the blue area? 
In other words, if you demolish the blue area, does that enable an area that's larger than the blue area? The, the actual um, demolition plan for that blue area would consist of just the, the footprint of the buildings within it. So that, that blue area would, would be where the solar panels would ah. be. The actual demolition area is Small. a little bit yeah. sm smaller. Yeah. Right. When would you know after you demolished it what would be the carrying capacity of that blue area? Like how soon it, would it be right at, as soon as you demolish it, you would know, or would it be a month after, or when would you know about how much you could put on the blue area? Oh, we'd know well before we started. Um, th this, this is maybe a, if I could just cut to the, to the point, this is probably a, uh, a question of special permit or not. If, 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 um, if demolition of of that falls into special permit, and we, we, we potentially have, you know, a, a sort of a, like a, a three to four month, maybe best case scenario with site plans review special permit. Um, we, we we just might not um, make it. It's it's more of a timing but question you, than you said before. You said it'd be up to six hundred. So my question is, when would you know if it's three hundred, four hundred, or six hundred? I think it was up to 800, right? 800. Uh, up to yeah, 800. you said it was up to 800. So when would you know that? Because I thought I picked up, if it's up to means it's contingent on knowing something you don't know now. Or So is it is it 800 or is it not? If it's 800, then it's not up to 800. It is 800, I guess. I'm just trying to figure out your, I, I'm trying to understand your decision process. It's, because the, the way you explained it, I thought what you were saying is we'll tear the buildings down, and after we tear the buildings down, then we'll know for sure that we had, can you do 800. I don't we'll think those it. are the complexities. Yeah, and so that's it's a little bit, it's either 800 or it's not. Uh, what are the complexities? Uh, that's a great question. That's the question we need to answer. What are the complexities? So um, on my side, um, this is why we're calling it phase two at this point because we don't know what the complexities are in their entirety, but let me go over what we think some of them are. There are utilities out there on the ground that are 100 years old, piping networks and whatnot, that at this time we don't have knowledge of their whereabouts, so we're working on that. So if we were to try to file now, and, and I've got a couple other issues that I'll talk about, but if we were try to try to file now on that we certainly don't have the information to present to this board as to what all those existing conditions are and how we're going to treat them it is our intention if we go forward on this area to demolish most of it to a sufficient grade and come back in and gravel the area over the second complexity is what are the drainage considerations out there there are probably a half a dozen or more catch basins manholes that are draining to certain areas that we're not sure of would need to investigate in our final grade how that would change or alter the drainage patterns out there um, on top of that considering that we're probably within the wetlands jurisdiction on this piece uh, and not the others because we've carefully moved the remainder of the orange area or red area outside of all wetlands jurisdictions the blue area most likely would trigger a wetlands file filing and a filing under the uh, stormwater management guidelines all of that's going to take us months to design and permit um, quite frankly if you were to ask me when would i know it'd probably be six to eight weeks out from now if we started studying it right now that we would know what our capacity would be able to be put up there right now i think we've got a probably a 90 percent assurance of, of what we think we can get up there in six to eight hundred kilowatts but we're not at a hundred percent yeah but the good news is if it was taken in a phase two approach and it just took longer the ballasted system is easily relocatable to that area if I was going to say that yeah. seems to me to be the easiest is assume you're not going to do it and then do it in phase two and you just move it right and, and that's why earlier I said you know separating out the demolition that Dan talked about previously on the south side of the building I saw that as just a lot less complex given the TRC meeting and conversations with Jennifer Hughes in here there that as Rex spoke to there's drainage considerations it would require a lot more um, review than I think the other side yeah. So, yeah, that, that just raises the question, though. I mean, I assume you have a time pressure based upon the state's 
cutoff period. It's about 207 days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not just put the stuff on the roof now if it's so easily moved? Well, it's structural. You can't put that much on the roof. We've already gone over that. You can't put six on the roof. Okay. No, no. Putting, what, that's so <laughs> 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 we would never have been Where there. Where did that come up? I, I uh, just probably about <laughs> ten times. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, oh, I, I can um, remember asking the question about a structural study on that, and um, was told that wasn't appropriate because the building inspector handles that. Well, oh, yeah, but and has the building inspector handled it? So at this point, they have well, good but confidence they that they can do two point four. But six on the roof. That's so. No, but it would get us out front. Well, if it was six point. on the roof, then they wouldn't come in front of the planning board at all. Exactly. Maybe yes, sir. This. Oh. <laughs> so this is what's being proposed. So. If, if, if we had the ability to put all of it on the roof, we absolutely would have done that. I spent the better part of the winter up trying to find every humanly possible way I could to fit it on the roof. And it, um, because of the complexities of the roof, which are more complex than the treatment plan, it's, it's unfortunately. Um, but the good news is we can fit 2.4 on the roof. Um, I should say the other part of that is that the owner is going to be re-roofing almost almost 300,000 square feet of roof as part of this. That's a big revitalization of the, of the plant, of the building. Because um, those, frankly, are, they don't build roofs like that anymore. They're, it's a very, very complex and, um, and, and expensive endeavor, this, this roof style. So, so that's the good news is we got up everything we could on the roof. Um, and to Mr. Simon's point, um, this is what we're proposing in red is a complete and buildable six megawatts. And what's in blue is if the timing works out and we can um, you know, so, sort of get the momentum in, in permitting to, to get there, because we do have a, a lot to, to, to do with permitting, um, it, if it's the fall and we have um, the ability, like Jean mentioned, to, to move some of that towards the end over to the west, that's exactly, the, that's exactly what our hopes are. Um, right. But we don't want to start to there. Do it with a permit, right? I'm sorry, the demolition portion? Yeah. Yes. I would think if it was taken as a phase two approach, That's it would be a separate filing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I'm sorry. Can you explain that? Um, if if the demolition of this area in blue was to be taken as a phase two, that it could be a subsequent filing um, for that specific area. It, just to be clear, I mean, the solar portion of that would require not the demolition. Well, the stormwater. Component because it's because of the demolition right, because okay. it would still be considered okay. a site improvement, mm -hmm. and there is a stormwater and component it could have, because of the complexity of all the drainage yeah. impacts and everything else that we talked about. It, I think it would rise to that level, so it would be a, yeah, a separate filing, and it would be tear down the things, make the drainage work, and move some of the panels from where it was to where you're proposing to put them. It'd be pretty simple. You do it completely separately. And because if you're concerned about time, you don't want to tie the two things together because if you put all your eggs in one basket, it turns out it takes a lot longer, then you, you could be out of luck, not because of anything the planning board did at all. Do you have any concerns regarding parking, given that they'd all be on the pavement there? I mean, no. Because now it's not carport, so there's no parking under them anymore. It's the spaces are taken up by these panels. Um, no, no, we don't. So the, um, the, the, the benefit of the ground mount system that we're proposing um, is that we don't have to disturb the parking spots underneath them. We're sort of um, parking a, a, a tenant on there that can be moved. Um, so. The best thing that happens to the property is a 500,000 square foot tenant wants to move in and start manufacturing again. Um, we've got the parking there and ready to go. We just have to put these, we're going to redo the roof and put, put you know, I, 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 when I say we're going to, it, the roof would likely be redone and we'd find a way to put the, the panels on the roof. Um, so we're, we're going to, we're adding expense to the project and I'll show you pictures of what they look like. Um, because this sort of answers the, the parking question. Um, so 
so this is the mounting system. Uh, there's two mounting, there's two sheets here. Um, it, they're actually two different mounting system styles. One's a rooftop system and one's a ground mount. Um, by the way, these are both manufactured in, um, or I should say, uh, they're the headquarters of this company, Panel Claw, is in the building. Uh, they do some manufacturing there, but mostly shipping and uh, logistics. Um, so the first product, which is called um, Polar Bear, is uh, is a very that that's the system that that's very low to the roof. It's ballasted, it, and, and that's the rooftop system. The second system, which is called Panda Bear, is um, the the short name for non-penetrating, non-disturbing, ballasted ground mount system that can be moved when the <laughs> use is better. But their marketing team called it Panda Bear. Um, so. When they say ballast, it looks like it's just concrete blocks that you pick up. And it's that's concrete the CMU. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's yeah, taking so. A, a, a tray that's about this big and putting a couple concrete CMU blocks in it. Okay, so they're very right easy on. to move. Very easy. Um, it's and it's not just the the, the mounting and the panels, but also um, we're we've, we're re, we're re looking at um, we're, we're going with a different inverter system. So rather than doing large central inverters, we're going to do smaller module ones that um, if we need to move a third of it to the roof, it's very easy to move a third of it to the roof. Um, so we're, we're, we're taking, you know, it's a, it's a more expensive project, but to the owner, it's well worth it because everybody would like to see a better use for that land out back in, in the future. Um, so with respect to parking, the, 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 the Panda Bear system, um, uh, you once it's moved, the parking can be restored in the future, but today's parking requirements um, I think we, we estimated that as under I-2, it was around 1,400 parking spaces for the 50-something uh, um, uh, companies that are currently in the building. Uh, there's over 6,000 parking spaces on the property. Uh, a, a good number of those are, are being used for other tenant activities, uh, like the truck driving school. Uh, there's a, there's a, con a container uh, operation, uh, mobile mini out back. Um, and you know, so, so when you come one. in, you should have all those numbers. Okay, exactly. You know how many spaces you're going to lose by putting the tractor trailer school there, and by any of the other things where you're putting the uh, the, the units. You should. It'll be once the project's done. How many parking spaces are there? I know you'll demonstrate there's a lot more than the minimum, but you have to do it. You have to give us the exact number, not just the swag. So, I understood. So, so the the the. Um, then these are just setting on the ground. Yes. And engineered to do that. Engineered to sit in what type of wind? The the 105 mile an hour um, wind load we have here times a safety factor 1.4 to the International Building Code Chapter 16 standards. Um, wind tunnel tested by the authorities and, um, and, and the top North American authorities on wind tunnel testing. And yes, sir. You're okay. So that's yeah. more than 150. That's oh, um, about yeah, above one. It's 160 something. Okay, because tornadoes yeah. hit, can hit 150 pretty easily. The panels will still be there. Well, yeah, I don't want those things flying into my house. Maybe you do. But they, they, yeah, understood. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so with respect to um, maybe uh, going going back to nets, um, in order for this solar project to happen, this the sort of our second major question is. Um, okay, so we've we're going to demolish that equipment on the south side of the property. If um, the the next step for us is to to repave it, um, so that it can be a continuous parking area, um, does the repaving of that um, require site plan review, special permit? What's out there? Is there anything else out there on that parking lot? Well. See, here's the thing, is the demolition is fine, but the two things you're going to have to demonstrate to us at some point in time is, is after you've taken the thing down, is the drainage going to work? And that may be fairly simple. And is 
by putting the tractor trailer school there isn't going to create site access problems and how are you going to you know how are you going to wall it off from the other people or there is there typically other parking over there we have to look at that yeah, so uh, the, the path to the loading bay gets altered somewhat from what it is today yeah so Lynn, to your point there's some storage containers and things located around there but for the most part it's parking right up to those right. and on the rear of them it's a lot of the truck access to the loading area which will still be I think it's in that green line it's just going to kind of dog leg in after Nets has moved and we talked about some screening and things around the, the school to separate it from need parking. Lighting, need. Um, so the stormwater piece for paving, I mean, would you require the pavement to be no, um, no tar or coal-based pavement here, given the stormwater system that's there today? Um, you know, this is actually a site that would be very helpful to have a site walk on it, you know, all these areas. Well, I don't. I mean, that's more the the stuff in its totality. So, again, I, I understand what you're trying to do. I think we're giving you that we're saying demolition. Okay, if you want to go get the building demolished, go right ahead and do it. Uh, but once you get past the building being demolished, you have to demonstrate to the planning board that the drainage is going to work and that the site, the way you're going to set it up. Uh, works and that's what the site plan review process is intended to do. That's exactly what it's intended to do. So, okay. Thank you. Um, and and we understood. We we took notes. Um, so what would be required? So the, the I guess the the, the follow-on question to this then is 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 frankly the the big question. Um, if um, understanding that we're um, do, relocating a tenant activity and we're going to be um, improving the infrastructure to support that, um, that there, there, there's considerable, um, there, there may be some, there's construction as part of that. Um, so now I want to ask about what, what was in red before the phase one solar panels. Um, if, if Rebecca, if you could go back up to the uh, top. So the phase one solar panels, um, we have, gone to great length to, um, I, I won't repeat all those words, but to make this non-disturbing, non-penetrating um, to, to the point where uh, I think by some definitions this is not even uh, construction on most of it, it's, a, it's an activity. And um, our, our belief in that the way, the, where, we, where we located them outside of um, jurisdictional areas um, we did that intentionally. Of course, we'd love to fill in some more of this space. There's a reason why there's, they're sort of drawn the way they are. Um, but in this plan, we're avoiding uh, jurisdictional areas um, that would trigger uh, some stormwater requirements. And um, our, our belief is that this layout, uh, and, and whether it's the ground mount or heck, you know, it wouldn't be unreasonable for us to just take the roof mount system and put that on the pavement as well, if if, if that's what it took, um, because it's it's just so simple. Um, so I guess where would, are you going? <laughs> I'm not sure what this, your ask is here. So, um, so would we um, require anything more than a building permit? No, that's what the down. whole thing of site plan review is. Don't even go another second on that. The we're not going to let you. Why are we going to have a site plan review at all then? We're not, you're not, for the ground mount ones, you've got to get site plan review done before you get it approved. That's my opinion. I don't know how anybody else in the board feels, but I, I don't see how you. Well, the fire department spoke to access. I mean, these are all going to be fenced in locations. The fire department yeah. needs access around it. Yeah. I, I forget the degree. I think it was over 360 feet spread this way. I'm not. It's probably close to double this way. Um, so if somebody was to be hurt in the middle of that, how does the fire department get to that person? Those kind of things came up. So I'm, I'm not but, quite sure. I, sure. Sure. So I guess my question is, um, and, and certainly we were, we're uh, answering all those questions with the departments, um, uh, w whether it was site plan or not. It was every you know, public safety's got to be uh, familiar with what we're, we're doing and have input into the accessibility. But um, 
I guess my question is what what part of 8.3 um, discusses or, or requires the, the site plan so that we're better prepared to come back and, and address it? Is it, Do you want to bring up the, is it the stormwater? It's the site improvement that could have impact to traffic circulation, signage, I don't have it in front of me, but make three, number three. Because, uh, I mean, certainly if, if there was a way to uh, address that with the design and we, you know, so to, to, to avoid that, it's just, we, we believe that we, you know, stormwater was probably the, the, the biggest one because um, we're, we're, we're not changing the it, circulation. Yeah, I, I don't know where you're going with it, but it sounds like you basically went away with site plan review. And as far as I'm concerned, the answer is no. And we're willing to expedite the thing. But basically, I think what you're asking us is, Take the panels on the ground out of scope. And the answer is no. I, why have a site plan review then? I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I mean, why wouldn't we even bother to have a site plan review if we weren't going to look at this stuff? I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, no. I, I don't mean to be doing I only ask because it's, it seems like that's been the precedent and possibly in the town with respect to other sites of. No, we've never done anything close to this, ever. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're willing to be reasonable, we're willing to be flexible. Basically, you're, I think what you're doing is you're, you're asking us to waive everything, and the answer is no. So um, what is the um, what is the best way forward? Um, are there, or I should say, are there any other comments related to the design that would um, help us move this from A to B the fastest um, at, at this point? Well, I think you got a good proposal. I think the concept you got's a lot better than what you had before. Uh, you. When you lay the thing out, I think you laid it out with a lot of clarity, uh, as you're saying, this is what we're going to do if you start circling the building from, you know, the, what you're going to tear down to where you're going to put the uh, tractor terrell school to what you're doing in the back and why you located what you're going to do at the back. And, you know, the blue stuff, you can just say that's an optional second phase, but this is what we're proposing and this is what we're asking to get permitted. And, you know, I, I don't think it's super complicated, but like Gene said, the very first question we're going to ask, you know, is, is part of this is, is how do you, like, are you going to put a fence up around it? I mean, it's not even clear to me what you're going to do and how is it going to impact the traffic patterns through the whole site? Those are things that we're going to ask. Uh, yes, yes, there would be a, a, a fence, um, six foot tall fence required by the National Electric Code. Um, uh, again, with respect to the, the, the circulation, is we um, we believe that where we place them does not impact um, circulations for for emergency access or, or otherwise. In fact, are by by putting them there, the fences we're we're, we're specifically trying to uh, eliminate public access to, to any of that and, and keep the circulation up in front of the building. Um, which, which should should be that, that means it's not going to take us very long. I mean, that's what I mean. It's, yeah. We'll go through, we'll look at it, we'll, you'll give your answers, and then we'll move on. Yeah, the, so, the, the fire department comment, I mean, it's just normal steps. But if everything's up to speed, it will go with speed. I mean, if you had the words you said and a flow pattern, that would be make it pretty clear. Great. So, so would would it be reasonable um, for us? So the, these two drawings are, are laid out um, sort of this way intentionally. Um, um, would it be reasonable for us to separate these as two um, two individual individual projects? Um, we, I, my my feeling, and please tell me if I'm I'm looking at this the wrong way is that because of the, the way that we're proposing to put the panels just right on the asphalt, and yeah, there's some, um, you know, I understand circulation in, 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 in Wayfair, but um, we, we believe that that is probably a less complex 
set of questions than maybe some of the things that might have to be done with respect to repaving um, and, and uh, you know the, the, where, where the nets would be going. Um, my, our, my client, um, you know, as part of putting the, the project together, there, there's there's a lot of equipment and material that's got to start to flow. If there was, you know, so weeks. I guess my point here is that weeks really matter to this project. If there's a way to get um, to yes on um, this, the solar component um, fastest, I think that that would be very beneficial um, while while doing the. Um, the, the the repayment and relocation uh, I should say the re repavement um, aspects of the cell parking you lot. You don't itself. have to actually do the work. You're 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 going through an approval process, uh, and we'll approve the thing you know based on what you've proposed, subject to certain conditions. So I think you're conflating what's going to happen after the approval with the actual approval. Are you ready to submit a building permit application? Do you have the requirements for the roof modules? Um, nearly. We're just finishing the engineering on that. Okay, because that, I mean, I would assume you'd want to get that equipment ordered as fast as you could. To oh, yes. Get that, that, that piece up there. I mean, that's... Sure, sure. I mean, but with, with respect to the um, site plan review special permit process, it could, if, if I understand it correctly, it, it could be... Um, uh, months past our hearing dates before you know we get to the point, and then there's there's appeal periods. Um, we we could we could well, miss it on uh, that. That's uh, right. Except for your project uh, that we've done in the past that had exceptional reasons for the length of time, go look at any uh, site plan we've ever done uh, and see how long it's taken. You tell me what the longest one is. I mean, you know, if you do your Preparation. You do your homework and you do the things that we ask. It gets done pretty quick. Yeah, I think when you carve out the actual meetings with content in the past, I mean, I think there was four hearings that we got through for a much more significant impact project. Yeah. Um, if I could just maybe shed some light, and I'm I'm just trying to shed light here, not argue or or debate the point. The solar phase one on the west and the north, are, we believe, are fairly easy to, to permit with this board. They're not very complex at all. The demolition area, the nets, and that piece of the permitting, we don't want to hold up the solar piece. The nets is which? The, the most southern demolition area that screen, we're going to repay. said we would separate that demolition out. So you said you could start No, no, but, but if it's part of the site the special perm the site plan special permit if all of this is linked together under one application we're afraid There's that no, if you don't have to do any application for the demolition you just have to apply for a demolition permit no it, understood you have said several times though that you want to see what we're doing with nets under well we have to know which i mean it's possible that we could condition certain things if you don't know what the answer to them is until after you've done the demolition. That's a thing we could we could make something subject to. But the the point is as part of you know as part of the special permit process, the site plan review process, we're going to want to know uh, if the tractor trailer school is operating into that area. How is it going to operate it? Is there going to be any barriers? Uh, a separation between that part of the parking lot and the rest it, it, of the parking lot. Exactly, exactly my point. And, and several other issues, to be quite frank with you, that, that we've studied. part of the process. No, no, it, it, we're not looking to waive that condition. We're asking, can we separate them out as two separate special? You can make three applications. Two applications. applications I mean. As two separate applications, because time is of the essence in the you, solar. If, if you wanted to do that, you could have made a special permit application for the, the tractor trailer school completely separate from everything else if you wanted to do that, but you didn't. So now you got one that includes everything. If you were to start demolition of that area tomorrow, how long do you foresee it will take? A couple months? Or? Because your hearing opens June 7th. It's only two weeks away. So how long would it take to demo that area? Um, uh, a month. A month. Okay. 
Yeah, it, it, again, I, I, may, I may be misunderstanding, but um, I, I, to, to us it makes sense to, to put this in as a couple projects, even if we have to update the notice, which still needs to be filed um, this week, because the... You, you, you can't you already file. You can't unfile. You, you so we'd have to withdraw a uh, site plan review. If you want to file for a different site plan review, you have to file it separately. There's a separate application, which you haven't filed yet. I haven't so, seen anything on this jump drive here, but the filing was for a 3.6 megawatt ground mounted solar system at this location. It didn't go into detail in relocating nets or anything to that effect. It was, um, you know, the narrative, all I received is that to set this application page. So, so they get into the details of what was well, going to be demolished. Proposed. I right. mean, yeah. It, but, but the supplemental material that supports that application is here, which I imagine gets into the demolition area and relocating the, nets. And essentially, the, the two drawings that you have on the screen um, may be looked at as um, covered drawings for two different applications, the, the way we've drawn it up. Again, the, the, the main reason for doing this has, is 100% based on timing um, and the need that we, we can't have um, the, 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 the site plan review special permit for the, the southern parking lot area for the repavement and whatever else is going to have to happen. So um, from your holding up perspective, procurement. when you were to start construction on the, uh, the, the, the panels, for, for these ground mounts, um, we would be looking to start this. Um, the first panels hopefully will be showing up on site July 15th. And we'd be looking to, to begin <coughs> construction there um, thereafter. Most, most of it we anticipate will be on the roof early on. Um, But that's a lot well, of panels when are you to put down. going to come back? When are you going to start on the ground stuff? When do you need, when would you like to be done and start? What's your your plan to, uh, to our, make being our, done by the end of the year? Well, our, 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 um, on a normal construction schedule, you'd be starting it right now. <laughs> um, we don't have that. If we were to get started on July fifteenth. Um, with the ground mount areas that we, and, and, and if we had some um, optimism on the north treatment area there, you know, that, that would be about the right timing for us to get everything in the ground. So when we say it's got to be turned on by the end of the year, construction's got to be done by, certainly by Thanksgiving um, in, in order for National Grid to allow us to, to turn it on. So that there's a lot that has to happen in the So in the fall. working back from Thanksgiving, how much time, again, I. I, I don't know these things. I mean, it, it it's all of it in a day. I, I don't know any better way to say. Got all these tasks outlined in the length of time. The, the, uh, sure, well, I mean, we're we're talking about um, several dozen workers, um, 30, 40 electricians, um, you know, twenty something roofer. A lot of things that have to happen. Well, it, what's it, 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 but what's the order on this? I mean. You have to get nets off the back before you can start the back. So you need to get the building demo and get that section rebuilt to move nets, correct? Right. So, so okay. So sequence it for us. So um, we're going to go pull the, the building permit for the roof and get that going. Let's just maybe not talk about that now, right? Okay. That's not what you care. Um, the, the demolition for the south side parking lot, um, we're going to, uh, we've, we've got a, a contractor um, ready to, to go under agreement to go pull the permits and um, get started on that right away. Um, uh, our hopes is that we would be through the permitting process by the time they've completed uh, the demolition for that area to, to be improved because it's got to be paved. We're going to put up uh, a, a barrier around it. We're going to do the traffic, uh, the flow patterns, make the dock accessible, and and everything is part of that. And um, we cannot start putting down solar panels in that area until they've moved their operation. I think moving their operation uh, it takes just a, a few days. So it's it's into the. Um, Later part of the summer, you know that, that's why I say it's it's probably uh, mid midsummer. It's probably the end of July, um, ideally before we'd be moved them. But but our concern again is um, through the 
permitting process, can we, can we get there by mid-July? So when, cool. when are you doing the west side? You missed that. That's what I mean. You, have, you don't have a... Well, we can't start building the west side until NETS is but, moved. Uh, we're, when you Why come in... west impact NETS? West is because Nets is there. I mean, yeah, sorry, Nets no, is there. No, oh, the um, when would that be done? Uh, that most of it would be. Um, that's where, where where the ground crew would start working on it as soon as that was um, permitted. Because again, by the time I think that this is permitted, we'll start putting that. Now they won't finish it all because hopefully we'll be uh, deep into trying to permit the treatment area uh, for demolition and reuse. Um, so. Um, you know, well, th those are the panels. Well, There's we, medium voltage it, work. There's a lot of work. We, uh, I think at this point, I, I, I think we we got to cut the discussion off because I think we're sort of, frankly, we're designing the project for you, and uh, we've never done this before. I mean, I've been on this board for 30 years, and you know, I I don't think I've ever been in a situation, you know, where we've 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 tried to basically plan the project for the applicant. Um, and I don't think we're going to, it's, I think you've got to come in uh, next week with all the stuff that you come in, uh, or two weeks or whatever it is, with all the stuff you normally come in with, you have a pretty good idea of what we want to see. Uh, you got to explain, as Lynn said, the phasing and the timing and sequencing of everything. You know all the issues. And, you know, the, the intent of the meetings like this is just to, to give us an advance notice so we know what's there so we don't ask as many questions in the first meeting. And we're not going to design the thing for you. And, um, you know, we pretty much told you everything. So I think at this point, I mean, I, I think we got to declare victory and move on, frankly, because this has been, you know, we've been talking for 45, 50 minutes. And I'm not sure what more you went from us. We're not going to waive site plan review for any part of the project. Uh, we'll work with you on the demolition, and we'll even work with you on the paving of, of that stuff down there. But everything else is, is going to fall within our scope. If this was approached as phase one in the red, does that keep you out of Conservation Commission jurisdiction, 100% out of them? We appreciate you coming in. No. Just one more question on the equipment. How do you connect them? Is that under, do you have underground wiring or is it okay? everything? Everything is um, attached to the the equipment that's above the pavement. So it's um, con conductors that are attached to the mounting system that's in chases. And at some point, it's got to go to a collector. Yeah, it, go, it goes to medium voltage, um, and then the medium voltage will tie into the um, uh, the substation up, up on the north How does that side. Tie? Underground. Um, we'll be using overhead lines. Um, there, there'll be one section that's an overhead line. Um, that's the, the the last leg of it. It's 23,000 volts, 23 kV line, mm -hmm. um, and and then the the rest of it will be uh, on the ground. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What else do we have? Just the um, regular meeting minutes, and then we have executive session on the agenda to approve executive session meeting minutes as yeah. well. This will take five seconds. Yep. Good. I'll make a motion to approve the May 3rd and May 10th meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Okay. So, do we read the thing? I move that the board go into executive session for confidential communications to discuss executive session okay. me meeting minutes only and not to discuss litigation and not to return.